In this video, we look at Power Factory's optimal power restoration function, which is used to determine how best to restore customer supply after a fault in a network. Study Case 5.1 Optimal Power Restoration should be active. Optimal power restoration can be used to determine the best sequence of switch events to restore customer supply as efficiently as possible, following fault clearing and faulted equipment isolation. We will demonstrate the function directly here, but it should also be noted that optimal power restoration is used within reliability assessment, and in fact all the necessary settings are configured within the reliability assessment command dialog. In this demonstration, we will analyze a fault on line LN1834, which is here in the network. This part of the network is supplied via three feeders which are represented in a schematic diagram here. And this is line LN1834, where the fault will occur. The optimal power restoration command is found in the optimal power restoration toolbox. Line LN1834 has already been selected as the fault location. We can follow this link to look at the settings in the Reliability Assessment command dialog. In this first setting, we specify how the priorities of the loads are indicated. Here, we assume that switching actions can be carried out immediately following the specified switching time. The other option is more pessimistic and would represent a situation where a single operator must carry out each switch operation in turn. Here we have opted to consider sectionalizing, which influences how quickly switches can be operated. To understand this option, let us look at a typical circuit breaker. If stage 1 is selected, the switch can be operated remotely. If stage 2 is selected, the switch must be operated locally, but its status is available outside the switch enclosure. Stage 3 switches have to be visually inspected to determine their status before being operated, so this takes the longest. For each stage, we can choose to what extent tie open points may be moved in order to restore power. Three options are available. In this panel, options are offered to specify how power should be restored to bus bars of supplying substations, if they are unsupplied following the fault. And finally, if this option is selected, the restoration uses a more precise algorithm to solve load flow convergence issues during the restoration process, but the calculation can take longer to run as a result. Note that. On the constraints page of the reliability assessment command, we have specified that thermal and voltage limits must be observed during the restoration process. In some cases this can only be achieved through load shedding. And on the maintenance page, we have selected this option. This means that the assessment will be carried out both for the case where the network is initially intact, and for the case where planned outages are taken into account. In our case, there is just one planned outage, which is an outage of this line. Let us now return to the optimal power restoration command and run the calculation. In the output window, we can see recovery scheme reports, which show the sequences of switch events. Starting with the case where the network is intact, let us now follow this step by step on the schematic diagram, using the trace feature. We select the relevant fault case and start the trace. This step shows the initial load flow. Now the fault has occurred, and circuit breaker SW1637, in substation 2, has opened to clear the fault. In the next step, SW2244 opens, which then allows SW1637 to be closed again. On the other side of the fault, SW1676 is opened, to complete the isolation of the faulted equipment. 
and SW2284, which was previously open and formed a tie open point, is closed in order to resupply the loads, completing the process. The situation looks satisfactory, with all load resupplied. But it will be interesting to see what effect the planned outage might have. So let us now run the trace for that case. We start again with an initial load flow. Then in the second step, the planned outage is applied. Already, we can see that this has depressed the voltage levels in the area. Now the fault has occurred, and as before, circuit breaker SW1637 opens. And again, in the next step. SW2244 opens, which then allows SW1637 to be reclosed. As before, SW1676 is opened, to complete the isolation of the faulted equipment, and SW2284 is closed, to resupply the loads. However, in this case, Full restoration of supply is not possible without violating voltage limits, so two further switches have been opened in order to shed load. It is clear that the planned outage worsens the impact of this fault, which will in turn adversely affect the reliability indices of the network. But the optimization process has found the best solution for this scenario, and restored as much supply as possible.